What's up guys, Tyler Capozzi here with an important video on media management. This is a common question I get asked all the time. What hard drives do you use and how do you back them up? If you do photography or video production, then you're probably working with a lot of data and hard drives, but if your hard drive fails, becomes corrupted, lost, or stolen, not only do you not get paid for your work, but you also lose the irreplaceable content that you've created. So here's the system I use for all my projects to ensure everything is backed up redundantly. It all starts with the SD cards. Once a shoot is over, when I put the card back in the case, I put it in data side up. That way I know the card has been used if I need more than one. If it's a multi-day shoot, I use a Western Digital My Passport Wireless Pro to back up the footage daily without the use of a computer. Then when I get home to transfer the footage, I simply put the newest cards at the bottom of the case and the oldest ones get shifted up, so I'm always using the oldest cards first. The footage stays on the cards until the next time I need them. For my edit slash active projects drive, I use a Samsung T7 SSD drive. I chose that drive because it's incredibly fast with write speeds up to 1000 megabytes per second and it uses USB-C. Even though my current iMac has standard USB 3 ports, I'm still getting significantly faster speeds than most of my other hard drives and the drive does come with both cables so you can use it in either USB-C or USB 3 ports. SSD stands for solid state drive and that means there are no moving parts inside the drive. So they're more shock resistant and can apparently withstand drops from up to 6 feet. So if you travel a lot, I'd strongly recommend an SSD. Since I primarily work with video, I edit in Adobe Premiere Pro. Inside Premiere, I set it to autosave every five minutes. Whichever edit program you're using, chances are there's an autosave feature. That way, if Premiere crashes, I lose power or the system somehow freezes, I'm only out five minutes of my time max. In conjunction with autosave, I also use a program called Carbon Copy Cloner. This is a paid software that's currently $39.99. I'll also have links for everything that I'm talking about down below in the description. Carbon Copy Cloner allows you to target a folder within a hard drive, select a backup location for that folder, and then you even have the ability to select certain files if there are things that you don't want backed up. I personally select the root folder for the project, choose the destination, and then I select hourly for the frequency. The first time that it backs up it might take a while, but each subsequent time it's only going to need to back up new or updated files. For my backup destination, I use a Drobo, which is a RAID hard drive consisting of five 3 terabyte drives for a total of 15 terabytes. However, I enabled dual disk redundancy, meaning I can have up to two simultaneous drive failures before I lose any data. Now this does come at the cost of significantly less usable disk space. I actually only have 8.11 terabytes usable with this mode enabled. One of my drives on this Drobo did fail recently, which is what prompted me to start using this entire backup system in the first place. Regardless of whatever RAID you decide to use, I would recommend setting the RAID mode to being able to withstand at least one drive failure. If you think about it, once one drive fails, it is possible that another may not be far behind since all the drives are the same age and have the same amount of usage. Each RAID offers a different level of redundancy and speed. The higher the redundancy, the slower the speed. The less redundancy, the faster the speed. There are plenty of videos out there describing RAID modes, so if you're interested, feel free to look those up. While ending the backup system here would be a pretty safe bet, it still doesn't protect me if the house burns down or the drives get lost or stolen. That's where Backblaze comes in. Backblaze is an automated cloud-based backup software that allows you to target what drives you want to back up and it simply lets you run it silently in the background. At the making of this video, it's an annual fee of $60 per year for unlimited storage. Yes, true unlimited storage. You simply select what drives you want to be backed up and that's it. It almost sounds too good to be true, so you're probably wondering, what's the catch? Well, there is no catch, but there are three minor downsides. One is that you can't target or prioritize what files that you want to be backed up first if you have priority footage. It picks and chooses on its own what order to back up in. Issue two is that you have to plug the drive in at least one time every 30 days. If you're out of town for 30 days and you're worried about losing your data, you can always contact Backblaze and they'll make sure that your data doesn't get erased. The last issue is that the files that are backed up to their servers are not shareable. Unlike Google Drive or Dropbox, you can't generate a shareable link. Backblaze does offer this service, but it comes at a different rate, and it's beyond what I'm looking to do for my backups. If you do need to access your backed up files in the event of a loss, you can simply download them as zip files. If it's a lot of content though, Backblaze can also send you a flash drive or a hard drive up to eight terabytes for a fee, which is then reimbursed if you return the drive. So that's the system. I know it was a lot, so let's recap. 
raw footage stays on the SD cards, which are in a cyclical rotation, so the oldest cards get used first. Active projects are edited from an SSD drive, autosaving every five minutes. The SSD is then backed up hourly with carbon copy cloner to the RAID hard drive, which has dual disk redundancy enabled and is constantly being backed up in the background with Backblaze to cloud-based storage. Once a project is complete, I simply delete it off the SSD because it's already backed up to the RAID, which also acts as my archival drive. And that's it, an incredibly redundant, efficient, and secure backup system. While we technically could be more redundant, we'll eventually hit the law of diminishing return and it kind of becomes overkill. Links for everything I mentioned in this entire video are below in the description. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments, I do read everyone. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.